Today I'm drinking a cold brew. It's always good, refreshing, and has become a part of my daily routine. There's never a time I turn one down. It reminds me a lot of following my very special first guest, the always hilarious PFT commenter from Pardon My Take. This is a cup of Joey with me, Joey Molinero. What kind of coffee drinking on, man? Uh, this is straight bourbon whiskey. Oh, okay. Never too early on a Friday morning. A little eye opener. Yeah. That's all right. No, it's, just, um, this is Death Wish. I got Death Wish, but there is just a little bit of the good stuff in there just to just to get me going. I love it, man. Loosen it up. I, I just went with the cold brew with a little bit of cream. I said that uh, it's a it's a daily routine. It's always good. It's always refreshing. It's kind of like following you, you know, like uh, online. A good representation of the cold brew. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. I, I find that I enjoy cold brew more in the wintertime than I do in the summertime. I'm weird like that. I don't know what it is, but like uh, I'll, I'll drink an iced coffee if it's freezing outside and I'll drink a hot coffee if it's hot outside. I guess I'm just kind of a badass like that, you know? I, I gotta be honest with you, Joey. I am desperately in need of sports back. Like I've started to care about stuff that I should not be caring about, that an average 35 year old male should not be caring about. Like I've been, I, I bought fucking oat milk the other day because I was like, oh, this will be fun to try in my coffee. <laughs> I thought that I thought that buying oat milk would be fun. Hey, I'm to the point where I'm actually getting up and running stairs in the morning because I need some competitiveness in my life. Yes. Which is I'm, just insane to me, but I'm doing it. I'm treating myself like a dog. I get on a bike to exercise just so that I can have something to do and then be tired later on in the day. Because yeah. there's, there's like, I'm so far out of my normal routine. I'm so close to my breaking point. I need sports back on TV right now. I'm sick of, the internet has become like a huge cesspool right now because we're all in the same boat together. We're all just pissed all the time because there's nothing fun going on. Yep. And so then we all focus on like all the negative shit out there and we get all worked up by it. Uh, I just, I would love to care about like Ryan Braun's slugging percentage again. Something like stupid as hell like that. I want to get worked up about like the Nats bullpen. That to me sounds like, I want to get mad. I don't, I don't just want to get worked up. I want to get mad about like uh, uh, Dave Roberts not winning a World Series in Los Angeles and what that's doing to Kershaw's career. Right. Like, I miss getting mad about utterly inconsequential things. So yeah, yeah, I feel like you're one of the guys, kind of like me. Like I, I, I am a, a big sports fan, but at the end of the day, I like to joke about it more, and I like to make fun of those guys who are like at the office that are just like, "No way, man! His his uh, his batting average is not good enough to be in the three hole." <laughs> but we're all gonna revert back to that because we haven't had sports for that long. That we're all just gonna be those guys that have like the hottest takes, the most. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean, I mean that that's oh, what yeah. we're gonna revert back to. But I, I, I'm I, with you. I'm here for it. I, I do miss it because it's it's nice to it's nice to care about something that you shouldn't care about sometimes. Do you remember the first time that I interviewed you? I know you get interviewed a lot, but I wanted to see. Uh, first time you interviewed me. Big Cat was I don't. There. Uh, we're we're in a lobby, right? Yes. We met you in a hotel lobby at some point. No, 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 no. That's um. That was that was the most recent back before all this shit happened. No, that First, that wasn't that was not a lobby. Point of order. That was a conference room. Yes. That was like that's where they put you when you're getting a pyramid scheme sold to you. That's where yes. we met that time. But I thought that the first time that we met, it was in a lobby. So I might be wrong. You're right. You're actually right. That's I, I didn't think that you would remember that. But it was you guys are in Indy for mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was for. But yeah, you were doing a stop at uh, Dan Dockich's show, our buddy Dan. Yep. And uh, I was just some lowly, like, you know, entry level employee. I was like, oh, I'm going to try to go get an interview with Big Cat and PFT. And <laughs> I had this girl who's like my superior who just, it was so dumb, dude. We like, you're right. We sat in a lobby and we had these like weird, like, doctor's chairs that we were sitting in. And she just filmed it on her phone. And I was like, God, man, this is kind of embarrassing. But you guys played along with it. So I appreciate that. I haven't gotten to thank oh, you yeah. for that. No problem. Like, I, you've always been a guy that just, like, grinds it out. And, and like, we respect guys like that. And it was, it was a fun thing to do. Plus, after 
anytime after or right before you do an interview with Dan Dockich, you're looking for like a breath of fresh air or normalcy from somebody else because Dan is so off his rocker sometimes. I mean, we love him, but he's 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 a loon, right? He can like go hard yeah. with the takes. I think that was the first grit week and he was probably, um, I think he had just asked us, he, he saw our RV and he was like, you guys got any whores that you're banging on the RV? He's like, <laughs> ask us that on the air. And we're like, we're like, no, Dan. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. You haven't got any prostitutes? No, Dan. Sure, you're like, sure not gonna answer that even if we did. Not on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know we, we have uh, we have bunk beds that we sleep on on this bus, so I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot of sex going on. Did you ever have a beef with, with Dan? I know me and Big Cat did, did you? I've, you know, I think everybody's kind of like gone back and forth with Dan a little bit at times. You got to roast Dan. You got to keep Dan in check. He's like a, he's like a wild animal and uh, <laughs> he's, he's fun. He's fun to admire and uh, sometimes just majestic to observe, but you don't want to, you know, it, you have to like respect the fact that the fangs could come out any second. He might do something crazy. Uh, but I, I don't think I ever had like a direct one-on-one -on -one beef with him now. I feel like he just, I don't know. I, I feel like because of what you do he may not have like caught on with it even if you would have been kind of poking the bear you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's not to call dan dumb he's obviously not dumb but i feel like with me and big cat it's more of just like a straight up like we'd give him shit or something and, and you'd be a little bit more subtle under the table or maybe it would fly over his head a little bit i don't know you might think i was agreeing with him yeah yes yes yeah. exactly like he'd be the guy that would like you would say something sarcastically and like making fun of him but it would be like boosting his ego a little bit so he would like uh -huh. quote tweet it and be like damn right you know what i mean yeah <laughs> he, he's, he's got he's got one of these uh ticks that i love about certain local sports personalities like he loves to cuss but within reason you know like he will let the damn ass and hell fly i think he probably says the word hell more than he says the word the it's like his, that's his crutch yeah. you know like we have i have like that i go back to sometimes and i hate sure. listening to myself talk because i go back to it but Dan just says, hell, oh, hell, hell. The hell, man? The hell? Yeah. <laughs> it, like, it, it, it like flows into one. It's it's just T-H-E-L-L-L. -E -L -L. The hell? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's his thing. And you're right about ass. He calls people jackass all the time. That's, mm -hmm. and it's like, even, because you're right, like, even if he was on a podcast or like on Sirius or something where he had free reign, he wouldn't cuss any more than what he already does. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he, like, he's like, He's PG-13, man. He, yeah. But he's a hard PG-13, you know? Like, he's one that you don't actually let your kids go see that movie unless they're 14 or 15 years old. We actually, I, when, is it, when is this going to come out? Uh, Probably Monday. Okay, well, that's perfect because we had Chris Collinsworth on part of my take on Monday. Let's go. He's an awesome guy. We talked to him about, uh, you know, everything from his friendship with Al. I guess Al eats a full meal of food during every Sunday night football game in the like booth. throughout the game he's got an appetizer an entree and sometimes a dessert and throughout the game he will make his way through this entire meal of food just in the booth and nobody at home knows that he's eating <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be good on the cough button then you know like he's got to be able to hit that take a few yeah. bites so he's not munching on the air that's another well, he's specialty to go back He's also an alpha, so he can just like stop talking and turn his mic off. And Collinsworth knows, like, oh, well, Al's eating, so I better just keep talking. I was gonna until say Al's done. Yeah, Chris. Chris loves to be able to have that time, anyways. You know, remember the three-person booth, the the three-man booth of him, Aikman, and Buck. Mm hmm. And was... yeah, three-person booths used to be like way more common, especially in primetime games. So there was uh, there was Tony Kornheiser, Joe Theismann, and I believe. Mike Tirico. I might be wrong about the third, but I think it was Mike Tirico. And they were awful. Just like terrible, terrible to get. They all hated each other. No, it wasn't Tirico. It was um oh God, what's his name? What's his name? He he does a lot he always would do Duke games, like ACC basketball games. Um fuck. Heisman, Kornheiser, and uh, oh my god, it's gonna throw me nuts. Just they should just put Dick Vitale up there and just see what happens. <laughs> Have you guys had Dickie V on? You've had Dickie V on, right? No, I don't think Dickie V knows what a podcast is. Uh, <laughs> Dickie V also, if I were him, I would be doing exactly what he's doing, which is just hanging out down in Tampa, going out to an early breakfast every day, coming back to my pool, and just like sitting in my pool with my polo shirt on. 
That's what he do, does. Just do a few like Twitter videos, just being like, "Come on, what are we doing, America, baby? What are we doing, America?" Yeah. And then everybody's He's, like, "Oh, Dicky V, you clown." Yeah, Dicky V weighs in as being anti-death. This is what America <laughs> needs right now. I mean, putting Tony Kornheiser in what what a what a move. What what a bold move by uh, the old mothership over there to just say, yeah, we'll throw, it. We'll, we'll put him in there, just to stir it up. Yeah, Tony Kornheiser is like, um, he's like gin. No, no, he's not. He's like, uh, he's like tonic water. I would say he's more like tonic water. So you know that you know that tonic water works with gin, right? It's got its partner, Mike yeah. Wilbon. They always work together. You know got it's it. going to be a hit. But you can't mix anything else with tonic water, or it's gonna suck. You can't even drink tonic water on its own, really, unless you're insane. So they they tried to see, like, they were like, okay, well, he he works well with Mike. I'm sure he'll work well with somebody else. And no, if he doesn't, it's just like Tony and Mike have this thing together, and they're great at what they do. But it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always go. And it was painfully awkward. To, I would rather listen to Dennis Miller again in the Monday Night Booth than listen to Tony Kornheiser again up there. That that was a that was a cowherd analogy right there, dude. The uh, the tonic. Yeah, that, yeah. You that, like that? That was, that was really good, man. I could see him uh-huh. looking off the top of the show with that one. They, yeah, they, they, I, they just don't mix. <laughs> I, I I feel like you're the same way. That you've obviously listened to a lot of Colin Coward to be able to kind of get inside his brain a little bit. And I I used to listen to him just about every day, and I was always fascinated how he would try to like he would try to make everything an analogy to uh, to the business world. And in his head, the people that listen to The Herd are vice presidents of marketing, uh, CFOs. There's, he has a huge CFO demo, uh, chief marketing officers. He's probably got like some vice presidents of sales, but they're all like vice president of their company level. They're all C-suite type level people yeah. that just tune in in mass to the herd with Colin Coward to hear what he has to say about Russell Wilson. So he always makes these analogies to like try to either appeal to that demographic or what I actually think is more likely is he's appealing to people who see themselves as being like, one day I'm gonna be a CFO, like a boss. So yeah, I understand what Colin Coward's saying about how come Matt Ryan won an MVP and never won again. Like I, I think that he he appeals to the people that are like aspiring vice presidents of their sure. companies too. Because they listen, they take they take the herd as gospel, and then they 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 start because I've been there before, and you probably have too. But then you start thinking like I would start kind of like thinking in cowherd analogies, right? Mm-hmm. And like I would start convincing myself in different life things. Uh, you know, when I hear him talk about like Jerry Jones, like Jerry Jones, he he's he's never he's never regretted going big. I'd always be like, all right, then I'm I'm going big because Colin said that Jerry Jones didn't regret doing it, even though he's yeah. a freaking oil you know uh, oil billionaire. But he, uh-huh. he does have a way like that. He really does. He makes a good point. Jerry Jones, he, he doesn't regret going big about it. Hey, but when he says it. <laughs> It sounds really smart. It sounds like he's making like a, a, a serious point about something you, you do get to nodding along with. I remember one time he was like, guys love lists. Guys, we're list guys, okay? You give me a list, I'm reading the list. And I was like, he's absolutely, I'm gonna start making more lists in my life. <laughs> and then I like went home that day and I, I was hanging out with my roommates. So I was like, uh, our top five quarterbacks all time, go. Yeah, and I was like, "This is fun. Dude, we're just spitballing here, just being guys." Everybody gets this. Into it. And he's just like, <laughs> "I found myself like it, it's almost like he puts a trans on you because like he, when he like talked about making the move from ESPN to Fox, I remember he'd be like, me and my wife took out a yellow notepad, list the pros, list the cons. The pros outweighed the cons, made the move. I like th- that day after work, <laughs> I think I went and bought a yellow notepad, and I'm like." driving home with it i'm like what why the fuck do i have a yellow notepad yeah. just, oh because yeah. i heard told me that i should go weigh the pros and cons in my life so uh-huh. yeah he was also he was also the first sports talk host that i can remember making content out of his divorce which you have to tip your cap to <laughs> he, was, he was very open about going through that and again what it meant maybe if you're a coach that you know is inheriting a quarterback from a previous regime he would he was like the first person i've ever heard like talk about stepkids and and stuff like that, but related directly to like whatever was happening that day in Major League Baseball. 
My, my, my favorite one was, uh, I think, when the Marlins were trying to, when they were, like, talking about building their new stadium. And he, <laughs> he literally said, the Marlins and their stadium are, like, when that's just run its course in a marriage. Don't, don't have a baby to try to save the marriage. This stadium's the baby. Don't have it. I was like, oh, wow. That, it makes sense, but it's huh? a stretch. What's PFT do on the weekends, man? Well, I like to go out a little bit. I like to get after it, usually on a Friday night. Um, I'm really good. We did a, an episode of, of part of my take like a year ago where we talked about the things that we're elite at, like the small things in life that we're elite yep, at. Yep, I like to consider myself to be really good at knowing when to suggest karaoke as a way to end the night. So you can't, you can't pull this move all the time, right? You can't pull it like on a monthly basis. You can't really pull it, you know, like even six times a year really, but maybe three, maybe four times a year, you just drop that hint. Like you start to, if you're out with a group, you start to like individually whisper it to people like, hey, here's some people are talking about maybe going to karaoke. You start like saying that at about 1130. You don't put it on yourself. You put it on other no, people. No one no, knows there's there other people are, but yes, people are saying. You, you cannot be the person who's like, you guys want to go sing karaoke tonight? Like, that's a hard no. Nobody's ever suggested karaoke and everybody's been like, yeah, that yeah, that guy's right. The karaoke guy's right. You got to go up to somebody and be like, hey, um, I heard at the other end of the table over there that we're talking about maybe singing Mr. Brightside later. Uh, you in? And it has to be that song too. You yeah. You know, Mr. Brightside. Yeah, Mr. Brightside is that'll get that'll get people to go. So um, I like to do that maybe like three times a year. Um, like to, I, I honestly on a Friday more often than not I'll come home now I'll put on Netflix or just watch some movie. I'll just like chill out on my couch. That's that's like that's a, a small mini vacation for me because during the week sometimes we work pretty long hours, especially during football season. Yep. So Friday, it's just kind of nice to come home and just like put it on the TV, fall asleep on the couch, hang out with Leroy and wake up at 1030 in the morning on, on a Saturday and feeling great. I think I'm, I'm like working on kind of a theory that uh, like local sports talk radio is literally just like a money money laundering scheme for like uh, um, HVAC units and like um, window companies and things like that and like boner pills. Those are the three, yeah. or, you know, or like refinancing your, your home loan. You, any sports talk radio station in the entire country, those four things are going to pop up no matter what. That's not a bad theory. I, I had never put that together as maybe a money laundering operation. But when I worked at SB Nation, I did write an article. Or I think I was, I did the experiment. I'm not sure if I left before I actually got it published. But I just lived off of things that were advertised on local sports talk radio for three days. <laughs> and you're right. So what, what it was, it was like tax attorneys. Yeah. It was uh, the landing strip strip club. It was um, wow. They're divorce doing attorneys. Down there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Things get spicy down there. Welcome to the landing strip on two 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 Tuesday. Wow. Left hand side. That's um, funny. What else was there? There was there would be like an occasional uh, barbecue, local barbecue. Uh, Commercial, yeah. a lot of a lot of used car stuff, but you're right. A lot of window treatment, uh, HVAC, but more than anything down there, it was just like a shitload of tax attorneys and divorce okay. attorneys that were advertising. Yeah, yeah I, I, but maybe not like money laundering, but it's like I, it's it's just a cycle of like the. It's a real good ecosystem for them of like one only exists because the other one does. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, if it was flipped at all or if one went out like the sports talk radio locally would just go go away completely yeah and it also makes you think when you're listening to to all these commercials back to back to back like this is their i i figured out exactly who their target demographic is am i that person that is like am i the target <laughs> do i do i need to be listening to all these it makes you start to like question like oh shit i'm i'm really fucking up well, I remember my program director in my old job where I interviewed you guys, I was because the old like, you know, that was always the debate, right? It's like trying to get younger in sports talk radio, but like the listenership is mostly like 45 to 54 or whatever. And I was arguing with him about it to try to get something on my end. And he was like, I don't want your audience. And I was like, why would you not want my audience? And he said, because your audience doesn't buy trucks. Your audience doesn't buy boats from our local marina. And I was like, I mean, that's fair, but like, 
they do buy other sure. shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, Your audience doesn't buy Roman swipes. Yes. You know? Exactly. Like my audience, my audience nuts way too fast. And I'm <laughs> going to sell the shit out of some Roman swipes to them. Your audience can't even get a boner. So I'll, you play, you say in your lane, I'll stay in mine.